One of the keys to clear thinking is to understand the difference between arguments and non-arguments. Just what is the difference? In arguments, you have an attempt to make a proof. That is, there is evidence given in support of a conclusion. Some conclusion indicator words include therefore, accordingly, thus, consequently, we may conclude, hence, as a result, implies that, we may conclude, wherefore, it must be that, for this reason, entails that, so, we may infer, there are also premise indicator words, and these include, given that, as indicated by, owing to, because, may be inferred from, as, as a result, since, for the reason that, in that, as much as, for. So, what is an argument? It is a set of premises that intend an inference be made to draw a conclusion. This is to be contrasted with non-arguments, and we learn non-arguments just in order to sift the chaff from the grain. One of the first non-arguments is a warning, and here are some examples. Watch you don't slip on the ice, and whatever you do, never confide personal secrets to blabbermouth Bob. Here's a piece of advice, solicited or not. Before accepting a job, after class hours, I would suggest that you give careful consideration to your course load. Will you have sufficient time to prepare for classes and tests? And will the job produce an excessive drain on your energies? A statement of belief or opinion, they are very similar. Here's an example of a statement of belief. We believe that our company must develop and produce outstanding products that will perform a great service or fulfill a need for our customers. We believe that our business must be run at a profit and that we should be better than other companies. Notice how similar this next example is, but it is an opinion. I think the nation such as ours, with its high moral traditions and commitments, has a further responsibility to know how we became drawn in this conflict and to learn the lesson it has to teach us for the future. A set of loosely associated statements makes no attempt to prove anything. Here is a quote from Lao Tzu, 6th century BC, which was later borrowed by Winston Churchill during the bombings of London. Not to honor men or worth will keep the people from contention. Not to value goods that are hard to come by will keep them from theft. Not to display what is desirable will keep them from being unsettled of mind. A report is easier to identify. It presents strictly the facts. Here's an example. Even though more of the world is immunized than ever before, Many old diseases have proven quite resilient in the face of changing population and environmental conditions, especially in the developing world. New diseases such as AIDS have taken their toll in both the North and the South. An expository passage usually begins with a topic sentence, and what follows is an expansion of the ideas contained in that topic sentence. Here's an example. There are three familiar states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. 
solid objects ordinarily maintain their shape and volume regardless of their location. A liquid occupies a definite volume, but assumes the shape of the occupied portion of its container. A gas maintains neither shape nor volume. It expands to fill completely whatever container it is in. An illustration has a key word. For example, force is exerted on an object. The shape of the object can change. Here's the key word. For example, when you squeeze a rubber ball or strike a punching bag with your fist, the objects are deformed to some extent. An explanation can be divided into two parts. The first part is called an explanandum. That's the dumb thing that needs explaining. The explanands does the explaining. Here's an example with the key word because. The Challenger spacecraft exploded after liftoff because an O-ring failed in one of the booster rockets. The phrase before the word because is the explanandum. The phrase following the word because is the explanands. Conditional statements are single statements that contain an antecedent the, and a consequent. Whatever follows the phrase if is the antecedent and whatever follows the word then is the consequent. Notice that you can state a conditional statement in two ways and it means the same thing. Here's the first way. If air is removed from a solid closed container then the container will weigh less than it did. This could also be said in this way. The container will weigh less than it did if air is removed from a solid closed container. It doesn't matter what order if or then occur in the sentence. What matters is the phrase that follows if, called the antecedent, and the phrase that follows then, called the consequent. Here is a summary of the non-arguments that we have looked at today, and this concludes our first lecture.